This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to continue working on our forest system. And in order to continue working with our unit here, we're going to need to actually establish what our forest, our, the system that's going to be driving all this, is going to be. So let's jump back over to Unity and create a script for our forest system. So we're going to say create C Sharp script, and I'm going to call this forest system. We'll open that up in Visual Studio. And inside of here, now we're going to have a few groups of variables that we're going to want to have access to. Now I'm going to add some headers to groups of variables here. So the first one I'm going to do is header system settings. And these are going to be for the overall how the system is going to run, um, not specifically for any given session of the game, but rather overarching. So first off, like how fast do I want this to run each time unit, the ticks as we've been calling them. Um, how, how often do I want this to happen? One second, every half second, etc. So we're going to say public float. And I'm just going to call this time unit. Or actually we could call it, um, let's call it tick duration in seconds, just to really spell out what this is. And I'm just going to set that as a default to one second. So every second the game will tick through once and we'll um, have our units do whatever they do. Next thing we're going to need are the unit profiles that we created for our grass, for our rabbits, and for our wolves. So we'll say public unit profile, and I'm going to say grass profile. We'll also say rabbit profile, and finally wolf profile. Lastly, in order to kind of view all this cleanly in the inspector, I'm going to actually group our grass units, our rabbit units, and our wolf units under some separate empty game objects, kind of like folders um, if you're working in a folder hierarchy. And so I'm going to simply create these, uh, we're going to create them systematically in the game itself using code, but um, I want them to actually have public references as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a public transform called grass holder, one called rabbit holder, and one called wolf holder. And because I don't want my inspector to get too, too overloaded with things that I'm not, like these I'm never actually going to manipulate manually, I'm gonna hide these in the inspector. So I'm gonna just add a line here and add the hide in inspector attribute. And this, because these are all on the same line, this attribute will actually apply to all three of these for us. Save that. Next section we're gonna do are our session settings. These are going to be basically things that apply to this particular session. When I start the session, in particular, what I'm gonna be asking are, how many grass do I want to start? How many rabbit do I want to start? And how many wolves do I want to start? So we'll say header session settings. And in here we'll do a public int for starting grass, public int for starting rabbits, and we'll do one for starting wolves. Now the reason that I break this up in this way is that if I did all three on one line, you would actually get a header for header above starting grass, a header above starting rabbits, and a header above starting wolves, kind of like the hide inspector here applies to all three of these. And we don't really want that. We only want it above starting grass, so that's why I had to break that one out. Um, that's the only reason for that. It's a little bit visually weird. It would probably actually almost look cleaner just to do uh, this here. But, oops, but either is equally valid. Okay, and from here, the last section is going to be session data. This is gonna be stuff that we're not actually manipulating, but we want to see and we want to know, for example, how far into the session are we? How many ticks have passed? Um, what the current count of grass, rabbits, and wolves are, so we can see that at a glance, as well as um, how many, um, another thing we're going to want to keep track of, but again we're going to hide in the inspector, are how many grass have been created, how many rabbits have been created, and how many wolves have been created. And that's just going to be for naming purposes for our units. 
So we'll do header session data. The first thing we'll do is we'll do a public int called number of ticks in session. And we'll, that will be a default of zero because we'll start it in zero and then progress from there. We're going to have a public int for grass count, for rabbit count, and for wolf count. And that's how many are currently existing. And then lastly, we'll do a hide in inspector with a public int for grass created, rabbits created, and wolves created. Okay. So that's all of the various variables that we need. A few of these we're going to have to apply um, things to in the inspector, uh, but for now we can continue on into our start method. So when the game first starts, we're going to need to establish our grass holder, rabbit holder, and wolf holder prefabs, as well as creating all of the units um, based on the number of starting units that we have established. So we can do all this and it's really just kind of setting up our forest when we first start. So we're actually going to create a separate method to do all that called setup forest. So we'll say void set up forest. And in here we're going to do a few things. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our grass holder equal to a new game object. We're going to just call it um, grass. And because grass holder is a transform, we're going to need to actually specify that we're getting the transform off of this. And then we can say grass holder dot set parent to the transform of the forest system itself. So this will be the grass holder will be childed under the forest, and then all of the grass will as we create them, will be childed under this grass holder. So it's a just kind of a nice way to organize um, these within the hierarchy. Next, we'll have rabbit holder, same idea, new game object, rabbits, transform, and then likewise, I'll just copy this. and change this to rabbit holder parent. And finally, same thing, we'll do wolf. So I'll just copy all of this. Make my life a little bit easier here. Change this to wolf holder, wolf holder. And we'll change the name here to wolves. So that creates our three holders. Next thing we need to do is we need to actually create however many uh, grass, rabbits, and wolves that we have uh, decided to create. So we can say for int i equals zero, i is less than starting grass, i plus plus. And then we can simply, what we're going to do is we're going to call a set, another method that we're going to create called create unit, and we'll pass in our grass profile to that. And that will be what is responsible for ultimately going into our, creating our unit and then initializing it with that grass profile here. Obviously we haven't created our create unit method yet, so that's going to come up as an issue. And then we'll simply do the same thing for our starting rabbits with the rabbit profile and for our starting wolves with the wolf profile. Now obviously for this to work we're going to need to establish that create unit method. So down here we'll say void create unit. It is going to take a unit profile parameter that we'll just call 
profile. There we go. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to create a new instance of unit. We'll call this new unit equals a new game object. And we'll add the component unit to it. Next, we will call new unit dot initialize and pass in the unit profile. Now, this isn't going to work 100% for us because eventually our unit is going to need a reference to the system. For example, to see which holder it should go under or to determine if there is food available to it. So in our next video, we're gonna finish the initialize method on our units and actually apply not just the profile information, but also add the um, system itself as a parameter so that our unit can interact with the system as a whole. We'll cover that in the next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.